Edmond Opondo is the founder and director of Grapes Yard Organization, which he founded in the year 1999 in Korogocho informal settlements. I am the founder and uh, currently working as the director of Grapes Yard Organization. When I moved to what Grapes Yard is, is uh, an NGO that works with the orphans and vulnerable children care and support and give support to these children. This NGO was founded in 1999 in uh, Korogosho Slums as a community school. You'll remember that back then in 1999 accessing uh, primary school was not very easy for the poor. This because uh, then Kenya was not a signatory to the NDG. So parents were not able to take their kids to school. Secondly, HIV and AIDS was ravaging the country. So there are a number of children that uh, were offered as a result. Uh, physically, we are in Kravosho. Uh, once you're in Kravosho and you ask Grapes Yard, Grapes Yard and Kravosho is synonymous. Uh, you'll be able to locate us. Uh, in Otawala, we are uh, in Mihango. Uh, Chief Cup again. If you ask uh, Grapes Yard Organization, uh, any children's home in near Mihango School, you'll be able to locate. Grapes Yard was founded in the year 1999, uh, first as a school to give uh, care and support of, to orphans and vulnerable children. You remember those days, accessing government school was not very easy because. Uh, uh, the MDGs had not been ratified by Kenyan government, so free education, uh, maternal health, uh, these were things that Kenyans as a population were just hearing from far. So another problem was that uh, so many children were orphaned as a result of HIV AIDS. This because uh, access to HIV, uh, antiretroviral uh, mm -hmm. drugs were nightmare to to the same population. Mm -hmm. So there were so many children that uh, couldn't access school. Furthermore, this was complicated by the extreme hunger that was biting then. So around uh, November, the same year, 1999, there was a need for us to start a program that would address the needs of these children and hence uh, the start of Grapes Yard organization and that reminds me to tell, uh, tell you what grapes yard means grapes as a fruit we were looking for an institution where people will pluck uh, come and pick some of these fruits and uh, to us the fruits were education health feeding these children doing giving social support so these were the fruits that uh, children were to get from this yard and hence it form the name Grapes Yard. So that's how it started. Born and bred in Siaya County, under a difficult background, Edmund recalled having to brew Chang'a in order to pay his school fees. Well, uh, I grew from born and bred in a village in Siaya, uh, one of the few that uh, understood what poverty is. In real sense, I grew Changat so that I could uh, pay for my school fees. And uh, those days, uh, government, uh, those that were in government stream school, we were, we were paying around uh, 900 shillings uh, uh, a year, which was not forthcoming. So I had to brew Changat. Secondly, I came from a very strong, uh, strong Catholic, and uh, my father being the catechist of the local uh, sub-parish. My father wanted me to be a priest, so he took me to a seminary uh, with the hope that uh, I will be a priest someday. But then this did not work because uh, he thought that the parish would pay for my school fees. So I spent uh, half of uh, first term, then I was sent because of lack of school fees to go look for school fees, then I ended up in a day school, which uh, 
trek I think around 30 kilometers every day as a day scholar. I think even what I do today, as much as I did not end up being a, a spiritual father, I end up being a physical father and to many within this organization, uh, children uh, called me Father Abraham. And I think this because of uh, the number of children that we've uh, managed to reach. Mm -hmm. So asking about uh, my, I, my background, this, I come from a very, very humble background, but with a Christian, strong Christian foundation. Grapes Yard is a non-profit organization working with orphans and vulnerable children. And Edmund says, he started the institution with only a sum of 20 shillings. Starting an organization with 20 shillings as a capital in itself is a challenge. Uh, it means uh, if we had a capital to start uh, secondary, to, to start uh, an organization then in 1999, today we would be speaking of an institution that is either close to Makinis of uh, Nairobi. Uh, we'll be speaking of institutions that uh, are like Kemrif. I know those are areas that, those are the areas we want to go to. Uh, two, uh, the donor world is shrinking each and every day. The Grapesyard School, located in Korogocho, has over 1,600 pupils, where well aside from education, other skills are taught and meals are also served. School is located in a slum area on low income, so we have a lot of needy cases within the environment. We have children who are not going to school. We have children whose families are facing a lot of challenges. So we have a sponsorship from a number of organizations. We also have children whom we need to assess and see how the school can come in to help in their lives so that they are able to access school and they are able to retain a school going until the age of, until they get to a uh, In the line of social work, we do assessment of cases of children, the ones we consider for intake, other cases that we do not put into the sponsorship, but come also as needy. There are cases where a child comes to school, the uniform is in such poor condition, you understand there's a problem here that we need to address. Other children come, they've not had a meal for a number of days, other children come when uh, the parents are ill. The parents, there's been violence. People have just separated the other day, but we want to maintain them in school. So we do assessment of the cases. We determine what would be best to be able to assist the child at that moment. We also do referrals. For example, a child is sick. The, uh, the teacher gets you the case from class by getting in touch with the nurse so that she's able to see the children and then give some first aid. If it is a case that needs to go to hospital, then we do a referral letter. I'm in charge of doing the referral letter to hospital. Mainly we do the referrals to NEMA because that's where our sponsor pays for their treatment. But if at NEMA the case needs a further referral, then the hospital will get in touch with the nurse and the organization and decide if it is approved, then they get the treatment elsewhere. Again, we have the lunch program that is given to the children. So we ensure that all children who are coming to school are able to eat lunch in school. This is because in their community where they live, and specifically in the various families, like some families, they don't have meals. So for some, the main meal they eat is the lunch that they eat in school. So we strive to ensure that during school days, all the children are able to get um, lunch. The children's health is also a priority as there's a school nurse to attend to the sick cases. Um, a registered nurse working as a nurse in Grapeyard School. We normally treat the minor illness and the major illness we normally refer to them all time. For the minor illness, they normally just come, but a child must come with the, with the parent for the consent. It's our sick day. We store medicine here for all the children because we have got special children and we have to keep their medicine safe. We have a sick nurse uh, who normally takes his medicines daily and uh, after some two weeks and or one month, she, he goes for review at a hospital that we uh, have our arrangements with. To aid the learners in their studies, 
is a school library whose most of the books are donated by university students who come for community service. There are these different uh, students. Uh, there are uh, these students from USIU. They usually come here for community service after some period of time, for a period of time, I mean. After that, with their time for living, they usually donate something, maybe books, not only books, they, uh, they, can, they usually also donate some uh, tools that can be used in the classroom. And then we have students also from uh, from Italy, and uh, I, and uh, those students from Italy, they're the major uh, donors of books in this library. There are these different uh, students. Uh, there are uh, these students from USIU. They usually come here for community service. After that, with their time for living. They usually donate something, maybe books, not only books, they, uh, they, can, they usually also donate some uh, tools that can be used in the classroom. And then we have students also from they're the major uh, donors of books in this library. To help in running the business of Greybeards, are a number of relevant stakeholders and employability of various financial sustainability tactics. Currently, Grapes uh, uh, as an NGO, we have a board of directors. Uh, decisions are made at the level of uh, board of directors and then those decisions are brought to the management level where it's uh, by me as the director and of course I have key officers that I work with. I have uh, like three senior social workers. I have uh, an accountant and administrator. And then uh, I have a home manager and it goes down to the teaching fraternity. Mm -hmm. In total, we have a population of uh, 50 staff that are taking care of uh, the entire program. We have two two partners that we work with, one from uh, Italy and one from Canada. Uh, 700 children are sponsored under the two organizations. That in itself is a revenue that uh, takes care of part of our budget. Two, we, we are working on a sustainability program where we've uh, ventured on uh, partly on transport and uh, with the hope that the revenue that is generated from the transport also helps to uh, support the program. Three, uh, the children that are not under sponsorship, we hope that, uh, uh, we hope and we always encourage them to pay uh, money so that uh, in terms of school fees so that we can run. And uh, finally, we usually appeal to donors and beneficiaries so that they may be able to donate, especially now that the cost of food has gone high, we uh, rely on food donations from various companies, from various individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, since COVID started this scale down, and uh, it's a concern that uh, I believe that uh, we should continue getting more interested people to give in terms of donations in kind or in cash.